Hello guys, welcome everyone and welcome for another topic and another lecture in our subject matter criminology. So today we're going to be talking about a specific topic that is included in our curriculum which is the uh, Republic Act 9344 or the uh, Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006. I know that uh, I think this is already this is an important issue that we should be talking about uh, despite the things that we discuss about the concept of juvenile delinquency based on its theoretical aspect. Now, uh, we're going to look into the legal aspect of the issues of juvenile delinquency, especially here in our country, uh, Philippines. So, for today's topic, we're just going to talk about the important provisions as far as criminology uh, profession is concerned on the law republic act 9344 or uh, otherwise known as the juvenile justice and welfare act of 2006 so uh, before we uh, proceed i would like to uh, invite everyone to either download a copy of the republic act 9344 or have a copy of those at least in your at your hand uh, at your disposal so that you can follow the things that we will be uh, we will be discussing because i'm not going to present every details on the powerpoint presentation so that's it guys let us jump into our topic so we have here the uh, simple background of the republic act 9344 uh, the complete title for this uh, law is the uh, an act establishing a comprehensive juvenile justice and welfare system creating the juvenile justice and welfare council under the department of justice so one of the important uh, contribution of this law is the creation of the jjwc no? or uh, the juvenile justice and welfare council no? so uh, i think th this uh, agency solely focus on supervising the implementation of the provision of this law. No? So, sila ang uh, nagbabantay kung na-implement nga ba, kung nasusunod nga ba yung mga uh, mandato ng batas natin na Republic Act 9344. So, one of, uh, one of its significant contributions, sabi ko nga, it's the creation of that council. So we have also here the date where the uh, law was approved. No? Ito ay napermahan during the presidency of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Uh, April or dated April 28, 2006. The primary sponsor for this is no other than Senator Francis Kiko Pangilinan. No? Uh, he is being bashed sometimes because of uh, some of the changes that uh, has been made in terms of age of responsibility no? uh, sa mainstream media medyo sometimes nababash itong si uh, primary sponsor ng batas na ito kasi um, instead na pataasin ang instead na pataasin ng batas na ito ang uh, minimum age of criminal responsibility ay mas lalo pa niya itong uh, pinababa at uh, pinataas yung exempted when it comes to criminal responsibility and that's why or some that, that's the reason why they are uh, looking at this law as the enemy of the uh, law enforcement sometimes especially in enforcing the law no pero that should not be the case because the law i believe has a pure intent in uh, protecting the welfare uh, protecting the well-being of those children in conflict with the law and uh, we will go over that uh, later on so that's with regards to the short background of this law no? uh, the reason why it was construed or kung bakit nagawa itong batas na ito is primarily for the protection of children and youth no? uh, the children and youth that we are talking about here are those children in conflict with the law now because we have also different laws that has the same reason of uh, why it was why it was construed kung bakit nagawa gaya ng Republic Act 7610 na or yung batas na promoprotekta sa mga uh, bata para sa o laban sa mga anumang uri, anumang uri ng karahasan na pwedeng gawin sa kanila uh, yan ay kung pwedeng yan ay physical no 
uh, emotional, financial, and others. No? However, the main focus of Republic Act 9344 is the protection of the child in conflict with the law. O yung mga bata na nasasakdal sa uh, kung anumang kaso, uh, uh, kung anumang paglabag sa batas. No? So sila ang mga pirinoprotektahan ng Republic Act 9344. Prino-protectahan sila in terms of their physical well-being, uh, morally, spiritually, intellectually, and socially against any uh, prejudicial act na, na pwedeng uh, maglagay sa kanila sa kapahamakan or that may endanger them, na, especially in terms of legal proceeding. Okay? So, para malaman natin actually yung full concept kung bakit nagawa itong batas na ito, If you have the copy of the law, you proceed to the Section 2 of Republic Act 9344 under the Declaration of the State Policy. And they all have the uh, justification why they uh, uh, created this law. No? So, nandun nakalagay lahat yan. Then we have here also the uh, terms to ponder. Uh, it's, it's important that we should... Uh, familiarize ourselves with regards to, this, to these different terms that we will be encountering throughout this discussion and throughout this law. So I just selected some, you know, that's why I'm, I'm saying that uh, if you have a copy of this, kindly go over it while we are discussing because I'm not going to put all the details in the presentation. I'm just uh, selecting some of the important or I think that's important in, in our field. To, to, uh, to know. So we have here the uh, term child. No? What does it mean by the term child as used in this law and as used in other laws that has the term child involved or included in their uh, legal definition? So we have here child refers to a person under the age of 18 years. No? So ang child dito refers to those individual, yung mga uh, tao na ang edad ay uh, nasa baba ng 18 years old. So, sila mga 17 uh, years old and 300, ano, 362.99 days. <laughs> mga ganun. Basta, hindi pa sila nag-18, below 18 or uh, under sila ng age na 18, they are referred as a child. You know, it's important that we should uh, know who is a child by legal definition kasi et, isa ito sa tinitignan natin under under uh, criminal responsibility under child's rights and and other uh, laws that uh, has uh, the significant use of the term child in in uh, in their uh, provisions no kaya napakaimportante dapat alam natin kung sino ang tao na maituturing nating child by legal definition at sino ang hindi so, under the definition of child and uh, provided by Republic Act 9344, it claims there or it defines there that child is any person under the age of 18. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya 18 at hindi lampas ng 18 yung kanyang edad, kundi uh, mababa sa 18 or bago siya mag-18. Sila ay may tuturing pa rin nating child. Okay? So, we have the next term, we have the child at risk. No? Child at risk is defined as a child who is vulnerable to and at the risk of committing criminal offense because of family, because of personal, family, and social circumstances such as, but not limited to the following. So, meron tayong mga cases of abuse. We have also uh, cases wherein they're being exploited, no? Uh, either physically or whether sexually, no? uh, either sila ay na-abandoned, no? na-neglect ng kanilang parents, that's why they are at risk of committing a crime. So, the uh, Republic Act 9344 also considers the situation of those child at risk. Ang child at risk, guys, are not necessarily... Uh, children that had committed a crime already. No? So, sila ay wala pang nakokommit na crime or offenses. 
However, meron silang malaki ng tendency na mag-commit or maging criminal because of their situation. For example, ang isang bata is uh, laging binubugbog ng kanyang parent. So, that child is already considered as a child at risk and kailangan ng magkaroon tayo ng intervention program no, uh, to the family. You know, uh, may singit ko lang, sa batas kasi natin it's illegal for the state, for the, uh, yes, for the state to take the child out of the custody of the biological parent. Ibig sabihin, walang karapatan ang ating, ang ating uh, gobyerno, no? ang batas natin, nakunin ang anak ng isang tao sa pangangalaga ng kanyang magulang. Unless, ito yung exemption, unless those children are considered as child at risk. No? So, kung consider yung anak nila na child at risk kasi nga uh, binubugbog siya ng mga parents, uh, ng parents niya, o di kaya is na-exploit siya, gaya ng mga cases natin wherein maraming bata ang nare-rescue kasi ginagamit sila ng mga magulang nila sa child pornography, or dito sa mga cyber sex and so on, na nauuso ngayon. So, pag ganun ang, pag ganun ang circumstances, the, the child will be uh, labeled as child at risk, and the state has already the authority to intervene and take the, take the child into their custody para maalagaan uh, maigi at mailayo siya sa potential uh, criminal violation na pwede niyang makumit o sa... Uh, abuses na ginagawa sa kanya. So that's that's the concept of child at risk, you know? We have the classification of child at risk kasi nga ito yung pwedeng gamitin ng batas natin, ng gobyerno natin na justification para kunin sa pangangalaga ng isang parents yung isang bata, no? Gaya ng uh, mga na, na huhuli ng mga bata na namamalimus sa kalsada. So, kung yan ay nahuli ng ating mga social worker na namamalimo sa kalsada, uh, that child may be considered as a child at risk at pwedeng kunin ng DSWD ang bata na yan sa kanyang mga magulang at sila na ang mag-alaga, magturo ng tamang asal doon sa bata. At walang magagawa dito si parent kasi uh, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, pagkukulang on, on uh, their part, da? And that's why the child was considered as a child at risk. I do hope that uh, the, uh, the, the idea behind child at risk is loud and clear. So we have also the term uh, CICL or child in conflict with the law. No? Child in conflict with the law refers to a child who is alleged no? or accused or a judge to have been committed an offense under our law. To put it simply, ito yung mga bata na nag-commit ng criminal act. Either they are being accused of committing a criminal act, sila ay naakusahan or sila ay nahatulan na nag-commit ng uh, criminal act. Ang tawag natin sa kanila are child in conflict with the law. No? Bakit child in conflict with the law? Why not criminal as the adult counterpart are being labeled? No? Um, this for the reason that uh, there is an impact if we use the term criminal to a child. No? Pag ginamit natin ang term na criminal sa isang bata, pwedeng magkaroon niya ng impact sa kanyang uh, morality, no? sa, sa kanyang tingin sa sarili. Yan yung napag-aralan natin under uh, labeling theory of Frank Tannenbaum wherein he pointed out that uh, a person, a child who is being labeled uh, institutionally, no, yung mga nalilabel ng batas natin, can have, uh, you know, jeopardizing effect towards their self-image, uh, no, kung paano tingnan ng bata ang sarili niya. At pwedeng ituloy-tuloy i-adapt niya yung uh, label na ginamit sa kanya and uh, pwedeng maging, magkaroon ng negative impact because of that label. That is why no, iniiwasan natin na gamitin ang term na criminal sa mga bata. Instead, we label them as child in conflict with the law. No? So, child in conflict with the law are those individuals who had committed, are those juveniles who had committed a crime that is uh, prohibited in our law okay so we have also here the term diversion program no let's just talk about diversion program and intervention program simultaneously 
So diversion programs are a program that the child in conflict with the law is required to undergo now after he or she is found responsible for an offense without res uh, resorting to a formal court proceeding. So diversion program uh, is an alternative program wherein a certain juvenile, kapag siya ay uh, nahatulan na siya ay nag-commit nga ng isang krimen, ito yung uh, kumbaga magiging alternative nila. No? Before we proceed to that, uh, let me ask you, if, if it's a regular proceeding, halimbawa si adult offender nag-commit ng crime, after he will be a judge of committing a crime, uh, the court decided that he is guilty for the crime, what would be the next proceeding under the uh, regular criminal justice system that we have so after correction and uh, no, after court proceedings di ba pupunta yan sa correction so ibig sabihin makukulong yung nagtaong nagkasala mag undergo ng rehabilitation program doon sa isang institution okay so that is the regular uh, justice system that is being uh, followed when we are dealing with you know adult offenders ngayon for children or for child uh, for child in conflict with the law who is believed or who is a judge to have committed a crime they will not undergo the same uh, proceedings na hindi sila uh, mag dederecho sa kulungan after they are being found guilty rather magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating diversion program or alternative program na gagawin. So, instead na sila ay dadalhin sa kulungan, sila ay uh, gagawa ng diversion program na kung saan is yun yung kanilang uh, ibibigay doon sa bata para nang sa ganun ay uh, pwede pa nating maibalik yung tinatawag nating pagiging low-abiding ng isang bata instead na dalhin na natin siya sa kulungan. So, that can be true uh, institutional rehabilitation under the custody of the DSWD pwedeng yang ang pwedeng yun yung gawin kasi commonly ganun yung ginagawa when a certain child is uh, is uh, found guilty of committing crime he will be detained under the custody under the protection of the Department of Social Welfare and Development or the DSWD under their uh, rehabilitation center no so yun yung kanilang ginagawa at pwede nating matawag yan as a diversion program kasi hindi ito yung regular justice system or justice flow na ginagawa natin sa regular court. Okay? So that's diversion program. What about intervention program? Intervention program talks about the series of activities which are designed to address issues that cause the child to commit an offense. Na? Uh, intervention program is applied when a person, no, a child is uh, accused to have been committed a crime. However, he falls under the uh, exempting circumstances of, you know, uh, under the underage. No? So, kung ang isang tao, isang bata ay nag-commit ng crime, however, siya ay uh, hindi papasok doon sa tinatawag nating uh, minimum age of criminal responsibility, siya ay mabibigyan ngayon ng intervention program. No? Yung intervention program goes like this. No? For example, bakit nag-commit yung isang bata ng crime? No? Either ito ba ay dahil sa family problem? No? Uh, Nag-commit nag, uh, na, uh, ba ng crime yung isang bata because uh, hindi maganda yung environment na kanyang family? Ibig sabihin pwedeng may domestic abuse na nangyayari or uh, you know, may may uh, effect ang poverty sa kanilang pamilya na kung saan hindi stable ang trabaho ng parents niya. That's why pati siya ay napipilit ang dumiskarte no? sa maling pamamaraan. So, if if that's the case, because uh, the social workers will try to develop, uh, try to understand the situation of the child, uh, gagawin nila ang kanilang uh, kakayahan or makakaya para malaman kung uh, ano nga ba ang dahilan kung bakit nag-commit ng crime ang isang bata at yun yung kanilang uh, 
yan yung kanilang isa subject sa intervention program. So, kung ang problema, kaya nag-commit ng crime yung isang bata is because of domestic abuse, then they will try to intervene and make a correction into that para nang sa ganun ay mawala yung uh, cause of the juvenile behavior, uh, juvenile, uh, delinquent behavior. No? So, iaalis nila ang bata doon sa family immediate family environment niya at ililipat sa mas maayos na environment so pwede nilang kunin yung bata para maialis mo na siya temporarily sa kustodiya ng kanyang pamilya kasi yung cost uh, kasi yung family environment niya is the reason why he is committing the crime kung that's uh, poverty naman na pwedeng ang gawin nilang intervention program is bigyan or hanapan ng trabaho ang kanyang mga parent nang sa ganun ay uh, hindi na hindi na madama yung kanilang anak sa uh, kakapusan nila when it comes to financial uh, when it comes to financial matters no so yan yung mga series ng intervention program na pwedeng uh, gawin sa isang bata na nag-commit ng crime para nang sa ganun ay hindi or para nang sa ganun ay maiwasan ng maulit yung uh, same circumstances na nangyari kaya nag-commit siya ng isang krimen. Okay? So that's that's uh, intervention program and diversion program. Next uh, definition next term that we will be defining is yung tinatawag natin juvenile justice and welfare system. No? So, the definition is that it's a system uh, that deals with the child, that deals with the child, uh, children at risk and children in conflict with the law, which provides child-appropriate proceeding including programs, services uh, for prevention, diversion, and rehabilitation, and also the re reintegration and aftercare to ensure the normal growth and development of the child involved. So basically, that's uh, the system yeah, that they develop that that uh, provides yung mga needs ng child, uh, child at risk and children in conflict with the law. So dito na nga papasok yung mga uh, programs na na-mention natin like the intervention programs, the diversion programs. Yeah? So bumuo sila ng sistema na pwedeng Uh, gamitin in case na meron tayong mga cases ng mga children na nagko-commit ng crime or may mga children tayo that are considered at risk. No? So, they develop a system that they will adapt whenever that problem on juvenile delinquency exists. No? So, yan yung tinatawag nating uh, juvenile justice and welfare system. Okay? So, we have also the term status offenses. The status offenses refers to the offenses that discriminates only the child uh, while uh, while yung mga tinatawag natin status offenses may not be considered as a crime when committed by adult. No? Pag uh, kinabint ito ng nakakatanda ay hindi siya necessarily a crime. But when committed by an adult, then they are uh, uh, but when committed by a child then there are they are considered as an offense so we have a good example here like uh, curfew violation you know um, today uh, ngay ngayong panahon natin we we have the curfew ano curfew hours that's being implemented nationwide because that's because of the pandemic but uh, during regular days na wala namang mga ganitong cases pandemic or whatsoever no meron pa rin tayong ini-implement na curfew hours that is applicable to children. No? Uh, yung mga child natin ay hindi pwedeng pagalagala hanggang sa ganitong oras. Pero, para sa mga adult, kahit anong oras sila pagalagala, it's okay because they are considered as adult. No? So, I do believe that uh, hanggang 10pm ng gabi, uh, hindi na pwedeng pagalagala ang mga uh, children sa kung saan-saan. Pero yan ay hindi nag apply sa mga adult, na no? Kasi, you know, adult or matured individuals already and probably they have reason why they are uh, outside during that uh, time of uh, during those times, na no? Probably they're working, probably there's an emergency and so on. So they have valid reason kumbaga, na no? However, uh, if that's committed by the children, 
then uh, that's another case and that is considered as a status offense. So nakikita niyo yung pagkakaiba. It became an offense because of the age of the person involved. No? Other example for this is truancy or yung uh, palagi ang pag-absent sa paaralan. Of course, that discriminates only the children. No? Yung mga bata na palaging umaabsent sa paaralan may be considered as truant and that is already a delinquent behavior. Not necessarily a crime. No? Although they are considered as offense when committed by minor but under our law, no? kahit dito sa Republic Act 9344, it defines, uh, it, it, it provides there that status offense even if committed by a child, cannot be considered as a crime. No? So, it's not a reason for them to be uh, sanctioned, for them to be imprisoned or whatsoever. Okay? Next term is we have the youth detention home. Youth detention home refers to a 24-hour child caring institution managed by the accredited LGUs and licensed or accredited NGOs. The and uh, they provide yung tinatawag natin short-term res uh, residential care for children in conflict with the law who are awaiting for uh, court disposition of their cases or transfer to other agencies of jurisdiction. So, we have also, let, let's just discuss them uh, simultaneously. Youth Detention Home and Youth Detention Center. Tignan natin yung pagkakaiba. Ang youth Youth Detention Home and Youth Rehabilitation Center, tignan natin yung pagkakaiba. Ang Youth Rehabilitation Center refers to 24-hour residential care facility managed by, a depart by the Department of Social Welfare and Development. No? So, you see, pag sinabi natin Youth Detention Home, it provides uh, child caring, it, it provides uh, temporary shelter for for uh, children na? and the one who manage it are the LGUs or NGOs na? LGU, local government units natin ang nagmamanage dyan pero pag, root, uh, pero pag youth rehabilitation center na? this is managed by the DSWD so that's one of the distinction between the two na? rehabilitation center youth rehabilitation center that that that's ma that is being managed by the DSWD and youth detention center is being managed by NGOs or LGUs no uh, of course they have the same uh, reason for excess uh, they have the same purpose for existence so they provide uh, temporary child uh, temporary uh, shelter for those uh, individuals for those children who are being uh, who are considered as at risk no? who are being uh, abused uh, who are uh, accused of committing crime no so yan yung pagkakaiba nila okay so those are the things that we should be familiar of under the uh, republic act 9344 now, let's talk about the rights of the child in conflict with the law That's that can be found under the Chapter 2, Section 5 of this Republic Act 9344. Now, actually, we have a lot. Na? Sabi nga dito, uh, every child in conflict with the law shall have the following rights, including but not limited to. So, it means that there are other laws that governs or that provides protection for children in conflict with the law, not just this law. No, so it's not limited to this law only. Now, what are the rights provided by Republic Act 9344 to child in conflict with the law? No? So the number one rights that we have here no, is yung right not to be subjected to torture or other cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment. Actually, this is not just applied to uh, child in conflict with the law, but all, no, all other individuals who are being accused of committing a crime has this right. No? Meron tayo lahat yan, hindi lang mga bata. Lahat tayo, if we are being subjected to legal proceeding or legal action, pag inaresto tayo ng kapulisan, we have the right not to be subjected to torture or any other cruel or inhumane uh, or degrading treatment from them. Okay? 
Second right that we have provide the, that is provided by Republic Act 9344 is the right not to be imposed of a sentence of capital punishment or life imprisonment without the possibility of release. So ibig sabihin hindi pwedeng mabigyan ng kaparusahan ng isang bata kahit anong krimen ang ginawa niya ng capital punishment o yung tinatawag nating death or life imprisonment without the possibility of the re uh, of release. Kasi under our law, now once you are given that capital punishment and the evidence of guilt is strong, then wala yung tinatawag nating uh, benefit ng bail. No? But that's not the case for children. So even if the evidence of guilt is strong no? and they are being provided with the capital punishment because probably isa silang napakasamang uh, bata, that's why nabigyan sila ng life imprisonment or whatsoever. They still have the right not to be, uh, not to have the benefit of being released the earlier than the expiration of their punishment. So that's one of the rights that is provided by Republic Act 9344. Uh, we also have here the right not to be deprived of his liberty and lawfully end arbitrarily. No, so ibig sabihin ay uh, hindi pwede, hindi natin pwedeng ikulong ang mga bata. Uh, despite them of committing a crime okay uh, but of course we have yung tinatawag nating uh, you know enough time na pwede nating i-detain lang yung isang bata kaya kung mapansin nyo once once a child is is uh, apprehended by the law enforcement agency hindi nila pinagtatagal yung bata sa kanila sa kanilang custody instead they need to uh, transfer the child immediately to the proper authority and uh, that's of course the DSWD. They need to deliver them to the proper authority because if nagtagal sa kanila yung bata, it's, uh, they don't have a choice. Either they will uh, release the child or they will um, be subjected to legal action na? under the Republic Act 9344. Na? So, hindi natin pwedeng i-detain ng matagal yung bata even if uh, they had committed a crime. No? So, once they had committed a crime, proper actions must be filed and they must be transferred immediately to the proper authority. And I'm talking about the DSWD. Okay? And uh, we also have other rights provided under here. No? Uh, if you can just uh, read some of them, because I'm not going to include them already, because, of course, um, these are needed only if you have those circumstances. But I think for the purpose of having an overview with regards to the different rights of CICL under the Republic Act 9344, yun lang yung mga babanggitin natin. So, we have there ilang pa. Na actually, marami ito uh, hanggang uh, letter O. So, if that's A, B, C, marami pang susunod. What caught my attention here is we have here the uh, paragraph N. Sabi dito, the right to be free from liability or liability for perjury, concealment, or mispresentation. So, if a child... Na, blatantly lied inside the court or through the through the uh, uh, to the law enforcement uh, to the law enforcer kahit magsinungaling siya sa kanila he cannot be filed or he uh, should not be filed a case of perjury uh, a case of perjury should not be filed against him <laughs> so Kahit magsinungaling ang isang bata, hindi mo pwedeng sampahan ng perjury based on the uh, based on the rights provided by the Republic Act 9344. So, look, and, look into those. No? Uh, if you have reaction to that, uh, leave them down on the comment section and, uh, and let's talk about it. Kasi ako, ako din, parang I can see the reason behind this. No? So, ibig sabihin, they are going to tolerate children who uh, blatantly you know, lies, tell a lies towards the officers or towards the court, towards the proper authority, no? without, you know, uh, being, uh, without being responsible or we, without being held responsible for that action. I think that that's a bad provision for, for this law. No? Uh, I don't know if you agree. You, call, you uh, leave your comment below. Okay? 
And uh, let's jump into our next topic, which is the minimum age of criminal responsibility. So, uh, as far as our laws are concerned, no, ang minimum age of criminal responsibility in our country is 18 years of age. Okay? 18 years of age, that's the minimum age of criminal responsibility. Yan yung pi pwedeng pinaka yan yung pinakamababang edad ng isang tao na pwede nating ikulong, sampahan ng kaso, bigyan ng parusa because of his action or of a certain crime that he committed. 18 years old. Okay? So yung tinatawag nating paano yung mga above 15 but below 18. Uh, that's conditional. Yung kanilang age, uh, yung kanilang res crime, res uh, yung kanilang criminal responsibility is considered as conditional. Kasi we need to look into into the reason why they committed the crime. We need to look into the circumstances. No, kailangan natin consider whether the person, the child, no, acted with discernment or not. No, ano ba yung discernment? Discernment is the ability of one person to distinguish right from wrong. No? Kung ang isang bata ay nag-commit ng crime despite knowing the consequences of his action, no? and his age is, you know, above 15 but below 18, then he can be considered as criminally responsible. He can be held as criminal res uh, criminally responsible if he acted with discernment. No? Kung alam niya ang tama at mali, alam niyang i-distinguish ang tama at mali, this, uh, and despite knowing that, pinili niya pa rin mag-commit ng crime, then he can be held responsible for the crime he committed. Okay? So, 15 or above 15 but below 18, who acted with discernment has, con uh, you know, conditional criminal responsibility pa lang yun. But if the child, despite having that age, no, above 15 siya, but below 18, but he acted without discernment, then he cannot be criminally responsible. Okay? And then, of course, uh, you, we must remember that any person under the age of 15, no? under the age of 15, whatever crime they commit, ito, ito, yung, ito yung pinaka issue kaya nababash nga sabi ko itong batas na ito. Any person under the age of 15, any crime he commits, he cannot be held responsible. No? So, whatever crime na makumit ng isang tao under the age of 15, hindi siya criminally responsible. Hindi siya pwedeng sampahan ng kaso, hindi siya pwedeng uh, ikulong or whatsoever. No? He is not criminally responsible. Why? Because they believe that at that age, no? pag below 15 years old ka pa lang, automatic, you cannot distinguish right from wrong. Do you agree? Na? Uh, do you agree with that? Na kapag ikaw ay nasa ganong edad pa lang ay hindi mo pa alam ang tama at mali and that is why you should not be held responsible. Okay, so diyan nagkakatalo yung opinion ng mga uh, iba. Kaya sinasabi nilang parang itong, itong uh, batas na ito is mapagkonsinte. Okay. <laughs> So, that's with regards to that. Ano? The, yan yung pinaka main issue sometimes dito sa Republic Act 9344 kung bakit lagi itong napag-uusapan when we are dealing with juvenile delinquency. Okay? Absolute criminal response, uh, absolute exemption to criminal responsibility yan. No? F uh, below 15 years old. Pagdagnakaw, nakapatay, uh, nakapanakit, he cannot be held responsible. But, uh, you know, uh, this this does not include civil liability, ha? Uh, baka sabihin nyo, so ibig sabihin, pag nagnakaw yung bata, na halimbawa, 10 years old, nagnakaw, nagnakaw ng cellphone, uh, hindi ko siya pwedeng sampahan ng kaso, uh, what about my cellphone? No? Hindi ko na ba makukuha yung cellphone ko? Hindi ko na ba, uh, wala na ba akong benefit na kumbaga, uh, maibalik pa yung nawala kong property. Of course, you can still file yung tinatawag natin civil liability. Da? Pwede ka pa rin maghabol civilly. Da? So, halimbawa, yung bata, nakasira ng gamit, nakapanakit, nakapinsala ng kung anumang kagamit ang may halaga, ang pwede mong gawin dyan is, of course, still, uh, you file the case, 
not for criminal uh, liability kasi nga hindi mo naman pwedeng ipakulong yung bata kung hindi para na lamang doon sa reparation no sa civil liability or civil damages syempre uh, hindi natin pwedeng ikulong yung bata pero pwede nating singilin yung kanyang guardian for the amount na nasira no para naman na uh, nang sa ganun ay ma-restore kumbaga or ma-repariate uh, ma-repair kung ano man ang mga uh, bagay na nasira. So, of course, <laughs> sometimes the the only drawback for this is when you know, when the parent themselves, the guardian themselves don't have the ability to pay. No? the civil damages so isa na naman yung issue of course you cannot force the government to take charge of, of the of the payment no? so yun lamang at least pwede ka pa rin maghabol civilly okay? but um, I think it's not a wise thing to do kasi you know the cost of the, the cost of filing an action dito sa bansa natin siguro baka mas marami ka pang magasto kesa doon sa Uh, hinahabol mong halaga no so that's the issues that i i can see under under this uh, law na meron tayo specifically in the topic minimum age of criminal responsibility okay so i do uh, i hope those uh, things are clear already now uh, intervention and diver uh, diversion program we discussed that already and uh We have a brief understanding already on the concept of intervention and diversion program. Basta tandaan lang natin guys, ah, intervention programs is applied to those individuals who are not considered as criminally responsible. No? Uh, gaya for example ng pagbabayad ng mga nasirang uh, halaga. That's, that can be an intervention program and that can be a diversion program. So instead na ituloy ang kaso, Uh, sampahan ng kaso, what if bayadan na lang, isettle na lang yung nanakaw, na nasirang halaga, uh, na walang halaga or whatsoever. So that's a diversion program. Na? And then, uh, isa subject natin yung bata ng seminar, ng sa ganun, malaman yan na yung pagnanakaw pala is masama. Isa subject natin siya ng religious program pa na lang sa ganun ay mabago yung ugali. That's an intervention program. Okay? So, yung mga yan, yung konsepto ng intervention and diversion program, ang pinaka-purpose niyan is to provide solutions. No? To provide solutions as an alternative of the regular court proceedings. So, instead na ikulong mo yung isang bata na nag-commit ng crime, is what if we try to provide solutions other than imprisonment? No? Other than imprisonment. So, pag ginawa natin yan, yan yung tinatawag nating diversion program. This is only applied for child in conflict with the law. Okay? Child in conflict with the law. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's just a simple summary with regards to the topic uh, Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006. There are a lot of things that we haven't covered, but I think for the interest of uh, our profession and the interest of our topics under the subject matter juvenile delinquency, I think those are just the things that we should look into. No? But uh, for for further reading, you know, basahin nyo pa rin guys yung different chapters and different sections of this law kasi there are significant details there that I haven't mentioned and uh, it's important also that you should know depende siguro kung anong aspect ng batas na to ang gusto mong tignan so if you want to look at the criminal uh, issues or if you want to look at to, into the programs uh, meron kang specific chapters or sections na dapat tignan ang tinitignan, kung ang tinitignan mo dito or the uh, are the justifications of, of the creation of this, you can look into separate chapters. No? But if you want to look into the treatment, no, kung paano nila i-treat yung mga children in conflict with the law, may uh, pu punta ka naman sa ibang sections or chapters niya. Okay? So, uh, I do hope that uh, our simple lecture has, has uh, you know, Um, allow me to share some knowledge with regards to this uh, topic if you have question relative to this if you have comment and suggestions or additional information regarding this topic you can put it down or leave them down on the comment section and uh, of course I'll try to get back to you soon thank you guys for listening I do hope uh, 
you learned something and that's it for this lecture see you on the next video